In a studio that's in a basement comes the epic story of how two friends changed the future of the movie podcast game forever. <laughs> the reviews are in. Boys Life Magazine gives the High Sci Podcast four and a half acorns. The Daily Bugle says, these guys are super legit. And Pope Francis declares the podcast as life affirming. From the kid who tried to get smart with David Spade and got fucking old. You're still at You're still back. And the guy who can name all four Baldwin brothers. Alec, William, Daniel, and the baby boy, Stephen. Live from the studio of his parents' basement. The Have You Seen It Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Have You Seen It Podcast. My name is Mason Knight. Sitting across from me is the one and only Cash Krause. But before I bring him in, guys, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification as it helps with uh, with our uh, yes. analytics and YouTube. And helps uh, get the word out. Absolutely. Before you bring me in, you made it sound like I, I, I'm coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you are right there. <laughs> there. Here I am. Yeah. Yep, like in. that one episode Special we did guest. With, uh, with the claps and everything. God, I wish we had kept doing that. I know. It was my favorite bit. We, it's been a few years since we've had a guest on this podcast to help review a film. Yeah, we should. We should. Well, yeah, right now the, the... I'll call up Tom Hanks, see what he's doing. Nothing. That guy's a f- bum. Right. Uh, yeah. He's never made a good Tom. film in his life. <laughs> Guy wouldn't know a good film if it hit him in the side of the head. That's true. Uh, But yeah, uh, namaste Wednesday. Wednesday. And namaste to you folks watching at home as well. Uh, But yeah, it's namaste Wednesday. It is. Of course. Great. Greatest day of the week, some would say. Well, some would say other people would call this not namaste, but hump day. Because some do call it hump day. Yeah. Some people do. People that I don't don't enjoy being around. I don't associate with those sort of people. I've never liked a guy that came in and go, hump day. You know, remember people doing that? Uh, Never enjoyed a single person's presence. Remember the Geico commercial, the camel coming in, being like, hump day. Hump day, yeah. It's like, no, I don't like Wednesday. Like, <laughs> I don't the only like thing you. I like about this Wednesday, joke is not funny to me. No, yeah, not. I'm not enjoying my time. I don't enjoy you being around me is what <laughs> I've said to every person of course. that has ever said happy hump day. As you should. Because Wednesdays fucking suck, too. Let's not get into that. Yeah, let's not. Anyways, Namaste Wednesday. We are reviewing. The only good thing about Wednesday is Namaste Wednesday. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. We are reviewing uh, a good one today. A really good one. Yeah. This one, was fun. One that we just... Uh, I mean, we have reviewed the trailer, of course, but mm-hmm. one we said, "Hey, why not? Why, why the not? hell not?" Well, we, why we not saw us? a few little names here that we were thinking, oh, "Hey, my God. we're pretty familiar with the old Anurag Kashyap, yes, Neil Kapoor, uh, Anurag as an actor." Say what? Say, uh, count me in, sign. Yeah, me I up. know he's an. I know he has acted in things before. People will start yelling at me. Oh, they'll. F- <laughs> I already see it. I already see the comment section. He was an actor enough. first before he was a director. You fools. <laughs> he acted in his eighth grade play. Don't you know that? <laughs> Classic. He was Tiny Tim one year. <laughs> right. I, I get it. He's acted before. Right. But uh, we've never seen we've, him yes. act in this a film This is the before. first film we've seen him act We've only in. seen uh, films where he was behind the camera. Oh, I believe they call that the director. The El director. Oh, yes. The maestro, some people call it. Oh, wow. <laughs> but yeah, uh, he is in front of the camera this time. And yes. uh, yeah, picking this movie, I loved, I lo- already loved the premise of this film. Mm-hmm. Very meta. Yeah. Very oh, meta. Oh, for sure. Movie within a movie within a movie. Mm-hmm. It's ooh, just peel back like an onion. But uh, yeah, we said, why not? It's And it's got like 18 Kapoors in it. A lot of Kapoors. So we're like, there yeah. are quite a few Kapoors. And everyone playing themselves. And, and just when you think there's no more Kapoors? There's, There's at more least Kapoor. three more yeah. Kapoor's. <laughs> and right when and right when you think Anurag's going to do a movie without Na- Nawaz, uh, oh, think again. He's Fox. got a voice cameo. He in does. It. He's got the cell phone cameo, I which was a, a hilarious he's an scene. To, yeah, yeah. With, <gasps> I helped you get your career, <laughs> Gangs of Wasipur, Raman Rukov 2.0. Yeah, just going click, off yeah. on him. Nawaz sued and just uh, hung up on Anurag Kashyap. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he says that. He literally talks about himself in the yeah. third person. Well, this is Anurag. He's a a good actor, yes. really good. But this part this part is perfect for him. He's playing. I mean, obviously they're all playing caricatures of themselves for sure. 
but it's just he it's such a fun weird fucking like uh I don't know, character of himself. And he's fucking weird in the movie. He is. Super weird. Absolutely insane. Deranged. But yeah. the, the, it, it's kind of the thing you would assume he, he would be after watching his films. You'd sure. assume this guy was a little crazy. Yeah. But he goes full on in this film. So it's a perfect role for him. And it's a fun black comedy thriller film, too. Like, yeah. I thought they spliced it uh, together pretty darn well. Yeah. Because there are some scenes that get, you know, fairly serious. Yeah. And then there are some scenes that are... Really funny. It could have been a little darker in my mind. Yeah, it you could know, have been. I like black comedies that really toe the line. You know, really get fucking mm-hmm. dark. But uh, I think it's. I I think in this scenario though, because this is definitely an experimental type film. Uh, I think it was a little probably harder for them to get real dark in it. Well, it wasn't like a dark comedy that they took really fucking serious. Like mm-hmm. they were definitely having some fun with this. Yeah, for sure. I love. So the whole premise is everyone's playing themselves. On a rock sheep. Uh, yeah, Anil Kapoor. Anil Kapoor. They're, they're all playing themselves. Uh, Anil Kapoor's daughter, Sonoma Kapoor. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, even the, the lady with the camera is an actor. She uh, is. Yogita B- B- Bihani. 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 She's, she's an actress. Everyone is, there's literally no, I mean, everyone's just playing themselves, of right? Of course, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, the premise, it's, I love the fucking premise. I don't know if it was executed perfectly, but I love the premise mm-hmm. of like a, the movie within a movie right. of Anurag and, and Neil you know, butting heads. Yeah. And if you know Anurag Kashyap, I do have to say, I know they're, and they alluded to it in the film. They go, oh, that's oh, what I love is twists. they both made, they both were completely, and Neil Kapoor and Anurag were completely fine with making fun of themselves. Oh, for sure. They had yeah. no problem with Taking that. jabs at yeah. themselves. And that's the most important thing too, because like you realize like these guys are, they, they've got to yeah. be cool in order to do this. The twist. They don't take themselves the, yeah. too serious, you yeah. know? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Anil Kapoor, he was super cool. They do a bunch of old jokes, and mm-hmm. he's super. I love when uh, at the very start when he's when he splashes water, you know, on a rock mm-hmm. splashes water on him, and the headlines are like fashion part. It says, uh, "Elderly man abused." <laughs> it's so funny. That was one of that. <laughs> oh gosh. But uh, yeah, they were not afraid to. No. And yeah, and even on a rock made fun of his own films mm-hmm. and shit, and they made fun of. Anil made fun of Nawaz being in all of his movies. Yep. He's like, get Nawaz. He'll be in there. Yeah, he'll be in anything you do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's fucking... Uh, I really enjoyed it. And we were talking about it before, but it's a film that now that we know a lot more about that kind of like the film culture in India, definitely not experts by any means. No. But I was able but, to, when they were talking about shit, I was able to be like, hey, yeah, I, I know that guy. I know that, that movie. Re- that was a really cool feeling for us because we we started uh, reviewing Indian films about a year ago. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool to be able to kind of get into the industry of Indian cinema and be able to understand, you know, these different films that they're talking about, these different actors, yeah. different directors. We were like, oh, and that's something that I felt myself doing throughout this whole film is I knew pretty much everything, every joke that they brought up yeah, I knew, I thought so too, I knew yeah. the reference of it because we had been res- reviewing Indian film for a year. So that was right. fun. Yeah, it was cool. It was. Uh, and this was definitely a film you couldn't review. We couldn't have reviewed as one of our first films because we- every single joke we would have been like, huh? Yeah, Gangs of Wasipur. What, like, what is what, Gangs of Wasipur? Is, is that a film? Is what that is that Raman act- Ragav 2.0? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But I got, yeah, like you said, I got most of them. And even when they were talking about it, like other actors and shit, mm-hmm. I, I got it. And they, this is a. Uh, I don't know, it's one of those Netflix Indian films where, you know, you could tell they also tried to make it for a Western audience as well. For sure. Because they bring up a lot of American actors as well. They like, do. They like, Tom well, Hardy. Like, Tom Hardy, which is not, yeah, I guess they're not really American because they bring up Chris Hemsworth, yeah. who's also Australian. Australia, yeah. But like Western but actors, are, Hollywood actors. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they bring up a lot of shit. So it was, it was relevant. And they speak English, a lot of it too. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, I really I really liked it. I liked the premise. I, I think the third act suffers I think they kind of did not know where to go with it. Right. And I knew, I saw that twist coming because again, Anurag Kashyap, his films typically have a twist. And yeah. I knew it was going to be something more simplistic than just, oh, I don't know what happened. I guess it's real. Kidnappers. I was really hoping that it was going to be Anurag, that he just wrote it so well and that mm-hmm. he was even acting and going this deep. Like, yeah. oh, fuck my parents. But really, it, I didn't like how it kind of just ended up falling apart at the end for him. Mm-hmm. And he ended up, although I did like the very last scene when he's just stuck in an insane asylum <laughs> it's just still writing a film to get yeah. revenge <laughs> yeah. it's his only uh, medium he can Anil only... <laughs> Kapoor got him though he got him yeah exactly yeah and, and that whole thing where it's like he knew the entire time mm-hmm. but 
He's willing to get hit by a car. <laughs> well, what a dedicated the sacrifices act. you have to yeah. make as an actor. That's for sure. Yeah. So I, I was hoping more. It was just going to be a really, really deep, like this was just on a rod getting back at a nil for mm-hmm. not doing. And that's another thing is they talked about, I think they talked about real shit about him not doing his film early on. Yeah. So that was, that was kind of cool. They were yeah, kind of like was. all airing it out, I guess. Well, and that's, yeah, that's again, it, it is meta because like uh, some of these things actually did occur in real yeah, life. I know. You know? It's, it's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. They mix reality with fiction, which is something mm-hmm. I always like when people do in film. But uh, yeah. And the, and they really fucking dig at each other too. Yeah, they do. He says he he says Onrog is is a shitty director. He's never directed anything mm-hmm. good. And Onrog says he's which only I doing strongly sh- disagree with that because <laughs> yeah. man, Gangs well, of Wasi yeah. Poor is a massive. Obviously, they're doing it for the film, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're saying that he his films never made money, which they don't. Which is crazy. Which is, it's true. I still don't understand. But I'm why surprised they were willing to even put that more. in there. But yeah. Again, though, on a rog, it's got to be the kind of person where if it's worth the film, he's worth doing anything. Of course. For. It's like Scorsese, right? <laughs> uh, we have to, t- the director, uh, Vikram Maditya Motuan, you, do you that recognize was really him? That really good. Yeah, I did it really fast, so yeah, I, I did. just couldn't even think about it. He's directed, uh, he's got a very distinctive Wikipedia page. He looks very angry he's in his picture. <laughs> he does. He does not look like a happy man. Like a grumpy cat, almost. But, uh, yeah, he directed uh, Joshi, Superhero. Oh, okay. Yeah, which was just average, I thought. Yeah, we I wish get... they could have done more with that because the premise of that film was really good. Just the execution was not all there. And yeah. And it really did drag quite a bit. But this this is a guy that's like, he pro- he's mostly a producer. He produces Raman Rugov 2.0, yeah. a lot of like uh, on a rock of sheep shit. But uh, yeah, th- that's the oh, guy he directed that directed Trapped. Trapped, that's like one of the other yeah. films that he directed, which we never got to do. No, we haven't. But that stars uh, Rajkumar Rayo, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. I, that was one of the first trailers we did. Yeah, it was, it was. maybe like the fifth one, I think. Mm-hmm. And when we started doing more serious films. Yeah, and that premise looked good too. We might have to check that out someday. Yeah, he was just trapped. Oh, and he. Oh no, he just produced Cargo. That's that uh, sci-fi one. On he Netflix did, and he was well. the executive producer of uh, Ghoul, and he directed a bunch of episodes of Sacred Games. Nice. Yeah. So he's. He's in the biz. Oh, he's in with Anya Rock, too. You know <laughs> yeah, he's in with the big dog. But, uh, yeah, I thought this film was, uh, like I said, the third act suffered, but it was the film was very funny. Okay, I want to bring up a, a really funny scene. One this, of my favorite yeah. scenes. It was so great. When Anil Kapoor, he's freaking out. You know, he just kind of realized in Anya Rock's shop for this script, for this film, literally kidnapped his daughter, and he goes, I'm going to the police. Because after, let's set it up a little. After yeah. abusing Anil Kapoor, he threw water in his face. Mm-hmm. Uh, on a shop, no one would work with him in, all, in uh, Bollywood yeah, he was or anyone. Blacklisted. He was blacklisted, so he was panicking. So he's like, how am I going to get back to him? And he writes this intricate script where he actually kidnaps Anil Kapoor's daughter. And they're going to yes. follow him around with a camera as he deciphers... Uh, where his daughter is, and he's got 10 hours until sunrise to do it, or Anwar Kashyyyip is going to kill his daughter. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. So this, so that's the point. They're first, he doesn't believe it, but he's got three rules. Can't go to the police. What are the other two? Can't, oh. I can't I can't go to police. Every call has to be on speakerphone. Yep, yep that's right. And uh, I can't remember the other one, but it's along the lines where he just has to be part of the film. Oh, the camera has to keep rolling. Yeah, Isn't constantly, no yeah. matter what, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so the first thing he does is go to the police. So go to explain. And, and uh, this scene is hilarious because he's, like, <laughs> he's really into it and because, you know, his daughter's really kidnapped. And oh, he's freaking out. He's freaking out, and he's, like, telling the, uh, the police this whole scene. And then after he's done. But there's a camera there. Yeah, there's and a camera there. And behind him. Mm-hmm. I mean, but and, and, is and, and not paying like, you know. He's behind the camera looking. And then when they go to him, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, my scene. <laughs> he right. comes around. Yep. But. And, uh, you know, at the end of it, you think, well, fuck, they're going to the police. Like, obviously the police. Yeah, it's over already. Something's going to happen. And the police start clapping and they stand well, up. Well, Honor's brought him and Honor's like, like, yeah, like, come on, now it's doing. Yeah, it's like, kick it up. He's yeah. did a really good job. Like, you have to do for actors. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> because, dude, it is so all, ego they driven. They stand up. <laughs> they all start clapping. <laughs> but Anil's like, he's freaking out. He's like, what mm-hmm. the fuck is going on? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's like, what a great rehearsal. They're a great performance, like, sir. This isn't a rehearsal. This it's is real. My daughter is kidnapped. Tears are crying. Yeah, I know. Tears are, he's still wiping away tears. And on your act, like, no, 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 no. Have you heard? Have you heard of this, this acting? Yeah. It's called method acting. Yeah. You know? Right. Let him go. He's let like, him let, go. Him go. Yeah, let him go. He's like, let him go. He's very into the role. Yeah. So 
so funny. It's so funny. But the cops, all they all like look around. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're standing up. They're like, what a performance. Yeah. And they're all excited just to have a Neil Kapoor in there. Oh, they're freaking out. He can't station. even get to like the no. the commissioner or whatever. They're, right. They have to. And they have none of that. But they have to like wall off paparazzi uh, from coming and in. And all shit. that. Yeah. But yeah, that he so he he broke the first roll. He did. And he said, "You do that again, I'm gonna fucking kill your daughter. Yep. Don't." Don't do it. This isn't a joke. Yeah. I like this film because there's, it is definitely an R-rated film. There's a lot of cussing in it. There's a lot of F-bombs. Yeah. (laughs) Which I'm fine with. You know me. You know this podcast. You guys watch it. We're fine with F-bombs. Love that. A lot of them. Yeah. Hey, we're Quentin Tarantino fans. He's the king of F-bomb. Yes. But yeah, a lot of F-bombs. But uh, yeah, there's some great scenes. Another good scene is when they're they're fighting. (laughs) They get into like a Mm -hmm. fist fight in the room or whatever. And Anurag is like... Trying to get to his asthma inhaler the whole time. I guess he's got bad asthma or something. Yeah, I don't know. Because he has it the entire time. But yeah, he's a. Uh, well, and then he wrote that into the script. Too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. And then, but then, uh, like I said, the darkest, the, it gets dark when uh, they cut the finger off. That's got to be the darkest moment. Yeah. And, and, and when I saw that, I got to be honest, I was like, okay, well, this is a film. Yeah. That has to be a prosthetic. And I was right on that. I caught a lot of, I mean, which this is not like a real thriller where it's like, oh, wow, you got to try to figure it out. Yeah. But I did see a lot of it coming, but I was okay with it because something this film did well is though the story may have been somewhat predictable and that you were talking about the third act kind of fell off a little bit. It did entertain me throughout it and it did make me laugh throughout this film. Yeah. I think with a comedy, as long as you can execute the laughs well and you entertain someone throughout the story, if the third act... Well, the third act gets, bit, did, it, it got it very is. unfunny, though, because it gets very serious. It does get serious. So, I mean, they're not even going for laughs right. towards the third. But, yeah, the the, the two, first two thirds are very funny. Uh, but, yeah, the third act, it gets very serious because Honorak loses his parents as well. Now that's very serious. They can't joke anymore. But uh, most of the time, it's just Honorak chasing down Neil Kapoor, just giving him shit the entire <laughs> time. <laughs> Tell, yeah, just just the entire time, just laughing and, but it's it's very again. I love the concept. It's them, and he's just in a complete panic. He's he's shaking taxi drivers trying to get. I know, him. yeah. But my favorite scene is after he gets hit with the car. You know, he's very, and he goes like because it's New Year's Eve mm-hmm. or it's New Year's or Christmas or something. But he goes to the Christmas party, and he goes on stage, and he's like, oh, he's all bloody and stuff, and he gives this crazy like speech. About how he's got to, like, find his daughter or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then they're, like, at the very end, they're all quiet. And the one guy goes, dance! And they all start screaming. <laughs> yeah, and they all start dancing. So he's, like, in, like, he's, like, in, like, a drunk, he's just, like, adrenaline. And he's, like, all right, play it! And he starts playing, and then he gives, like, this half-ass dance. But it's so Which, fucking funny, like, how he does it. It's and, hilarious. And it's funny how, you know, Indian culture, you see a lot of dance numbers in a film, right? Yeah. So I think they were kind of poking fun at that idea, too, that you always have to add a dance number in. Yeah, and... I really feel like... And watching this way, it, and like, the more midway point, like... Like, the, the hero is just at his end. Mm-hmm. The fact that, th- to believe that this guy could go in a full dance number. Right, yeah. <laughs> so he's well, that's just like, too. he's like, come pumping, but he's like barely moving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it was half-assed, right? It wasn't well choreographed as we often yeah, see Yeah, but he's like, play the film. music. It's so funny. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he gets no. And it's like, he, he can't ask for help anywhere because he's a Neil Kapoor. Of course. So no, a one, no one wants to just actually talk to him. They just want to, uh. They just want to talk about his films and get pictures with him. No one wants to help him or anything. Yeah. He lays his heart on the line, and they all just start cheering him to him to dance. After he's talking about his daughter got kidnapped, it's a it's a rough run for Neil. Uh, yeah, you could say that. It's a shit beat out of him. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's it was very funny though. It was. I it was a funny film. I enjoyed that uh, that dancing scene a lot. Sitting yeah. at a, uh, you know, this release Christmas Eve on Netflix. Yeah. Well, it was. Uh, it was a lot of Christmas. I mean, the memory Themes. dressed up as a Santa at one point yeah. and shit like that. Yeah, it's a that would have been a good Christmas movie to see. It would have been. It's not long either. That's nope, another hundred eight minutes. And that was the thing about Joshi superhero memory. It was too fucking long. Yeah, dude, it was like two hours and forty minutes. Yeah. And you could have cut out. Which is weird. Cause it's the same director. To that? So I yeah. would think that maybe he would well, have maybe more he learned. Eye. Maybe he learned from his mistakes. I don't, I think I think with Josh superhero, he thought like, oh, this is gonna be like a. Like a An superhero, epic superhero. Epic, like yeah. the origins of Spider Man or something. And so he's like, We gotta make it super long. But yeah, it was it was way too long. This one was the perfect length, even though it does go on and on at the end. 
He goes yeah. to the hospital, and this is the end. And there's a, you know the end post credit scene. Oh, I it, watched all of it. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> even when Un- Anil Kapoor is like, dun, 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 like yeah, he's it, dancing <laughs> weird, and I'm like, what the hell is going? on? And he on goes here? up. I can't remember what he says, but he says like, I got you, fucker. Yeah, like that. yeah. <laughs> he says something, and then he puts fucker. the glasses on or whatever. Yeah. It's yeah, it goes on for a fucking long it time. Does. It does, and it goes on even longer. It shows them win a filmfare award. Yeah, and the whole time I was okay, laughing because he's was, like, "I won six film." Okay, <laughs> that, and I'm so glad we brought that joke up because we talk about film fair awards all the time on this <laughs> podcast. And the whole, that was the running joke is like, is Anya Akshop kept saying that he won four, yeah. and then at the very end of the film, he goes, "I won six <laughs> film fair awards, you son of a bitch." <laughs> I love that scene. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, they were talking about it the whole mm-hmm. fucking time. Uh, so see, they must care about those film fare. I guess so. Six yeah. is is a big deal. I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, in my mind, it's a it's like the equivalent of the Golden Globes. Mm. Like you yeah, can, like a lot of people can win a Golden Globe and no one gives a fuck about it. But to win the Oscar, I mean, yeah, it's important. Yeah, it is. Because I mean, if I want a Golden Globe for directing, I but it's yeah, it's a it's a it's a mid tier fucking. Uh, I mean, Emmy, I guess, is right. a little lower because it's TV. But I, I imagine it has a Golden Globes. And Golden Globes, you know, they can, most of the time, they, they nominate things that are more fun than just mm-hmm. aesthetically pleasing. Right. Where the Oscars are just very serious. The Golden Globes is a fucking party. Yeah. It's just where everyone goes to get fucking wasted. Where Oscars is, it's a very, it's a serious party. Oh, it's very it's serious. We're serious actors. We have rules. We have we're to serious make people. sure yeah. everyone's happy and everyone's winning awards. Yeah. yeah, dude. It's too much work. Yeah. It's not enough fun. Everyone's got to wear fucking $8,000. No one's comfortable. You got to stand so in stu- people sitting. You got to sit behind Lady up. Gaga and she's got like a nine foot dress. You I'm can't like, see anything. Well, I can't fucking see. What is this hairdo thing? I can't <laughs> I see anything, Lady Gaga. Everyone's, and everyone's asking you about your clothing and yeah. shit. Like, I, I bought it at Target. I, I don't know. I'm not rich like you guys. <laughs> like, why are you here? I but don't the Golden know. Globe is just like, come on come in. Come on. <laughs> Everyone's drunk at 3 p.m. Yeah, Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, they're fucking wasted. Of course. They're up on the stage, barely can walk. <laughs> yeah, I know they're that. just having a good time. And it's like, it's not stadium seating either. It's like at tables. Right. So you haven't seen dinner and shit. Mm-hmm. Wait, that's what I imagine the Film Fire Awards. Yeah, it's much sure. more. But still, the high coveted one is the Academy. It is. I mean, any any guy would give give their filmfare awards. I'm sure for probably for the one. big one. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, they they talk about filmfare awards throughout the entire thing. Yeah. I thought it was very funny. But uh, yeah, I don't know if Honorog has won any filmfare awards. I'm sure he has. I'd be I'd be real shocked if the man never for Gangs of Wasipur if they didn't give him any uh, awards and honors. Let's let's check here. Filmfare award is more of pleasing the stars. I feel like it's like the. Because another very funny thing that they do uh, in this film is they poke fun of India cinema in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, they uh, even yeah. uh, even Anurag goes. He goes only in India your films are successful. He goes only in India they go to films for the star, not the movie. He goes you go anywhere else in the world, they go for the directors. Because Anil goes, no one's going to see a movie for the director. He says they don't put the director on the poster. But he says he straight up says in India they that's for the stars, which I think that's more like Bollywood, like area. I agree with that because like Molly Yalm, it doesn't seem like that's no. like the case. You, you throw out LJP, yeah, but we're going to see that film. You're going to go see that film, yeah. But you it's know true because be every good film we have saw does not do good at the box office in India. Yeah, every film we love does not do well. It makes like one crawl. They were right about yeah. I mean that, that but the, that's the thing is this film was very uh, not not afraid to poke fun and of think, itself. Yeah, and I think in some ways Hollywood does that as well, where you have The Rock and oh, Jason Statham, and yeah. they make five hundred million dollars, and you're like, this movie wasn't even fucking good. But it's like, also why? a thing where you can, in America for sure there can be films that are just so good that they don't need to have someone really big like Hereditary. Right. Of did, course, did great at the bottom, or any horror films usually doesn't have anyone famous. But if they're good enough, and they literally only had go to Tony him. Collette as yeah, and then that was it. Maybe the Josh Wolf kid, but he wasn't even. He was well no one at that point. Then. No, and yeah. Scorsese could put fucking anyone in his films, yes, and there would be a large audience that would go and see it still for sure. I mean, he definitely won't do that because he can get the talent. But yeah, he but could. he could. But I mean, anyway, I mean, he could put an absolute random new, and I would be, I would go see it no matter what, absolutely, because he's, he's fucking Scorsese. Yeah, like, like, I would assume. I mean, I would hope, like, on a rock, like, if on a rock made a movie with absolutely no one, I would hope people would go and see it. But I got a feeling that's not the case. Yeah, because no, because. 
Nawaz, that was like his big film was uh, Gangs of Wasu Park. Mm-hmm. And no one went and saw that. Yeah. I think now maybe a lot more people would have gone see it I if they hope. knew how Nawaz it is. It is legitimately one of the greatest gangster films of all time. It's good. It's an epic. It really is. It's a fucking I, epic. I fucking Five hours in length. I love Fazil too, man. <laughs> Nawaz himself. That yeah. character is. It made him. He said bonkers. it in the film, it made him. I, it's it, I gotta be true. Kashop did win uh, Best Story and Best Screenplay Award at the 56 Filmfare Awards uh, for You Don. The next year, he shared the Filmfare Award for Best Dialogue uh, for Gangs of Wasipur at the 58th Filmfare Awards. I'm almost done here. Here, okay. And then the film also won Critics Award, Best Movie. And at the 60th Filmfare Awards, Kashop won Filmfare Award for Best Editing for Queen. So there yeah, you go. All he films. does have a fil- uh, He does have a few. He does. Yeah. He shared one. Yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> I guess you can. I guess these days. Yeah. That's, what do you do? Cut that, the statue. That's another out? thing. Very interesting in dialogue is that someone separate white, or so that something interesting in India is that something separate writes the dialogue. Right from screenplay to dialogue. It's different. not the screenwriter yeah. that writes the no, dialogue, which is weird. What do you? Is it just the story beats? I'm guessing. For so. a it, it seems like it's a much easier. Bit for the screenwriter. Oh, hell yeah. You're not writing anything. Like, all right, this happens here, this happens here, this happens here. I'm done. Pay me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But now I got to fill in the fucking lines of what these guys are saying in between scenes. That seems hard. Yeah. No, that's the challenging part. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you're seems- trying to write dialogues, in my opinion, probably the hardest one to write. Yeah, especially, for, especially write for a movie that you did not write. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But I guess if you're really good at just coming up with... with Phrases that were just regular people, right? Yeah. And then you got a business, but but also that seems like you'd be good enough to write a story too, so you could just lump it all into one. Yeah, <laughs> they're paying. It is weird. Too many people in India. Yeah, I mean, but I guess it's a lot of jobs though. Hey, people are looking for jobs. People are looking for jobs. You got a dialogue guy. You got a screenwriter guy. Absolutely. You got, you got them all. But uh, yeah, I, would you recommend this film, Mason? Um. Okay, so that's a loaded question. If you know nothing <laughs> about Indian cinema, I don't think you would appreciate it the same way that you would knowing a lot about Indian cinema. Yeah, but right? I think you could still get something out of it. Just this crazy director. I mean, just this crazy director making this crazy story with mm-hmm. this very high up actor. Yeah, I would that's just say you, you some re- of the jokes you probably are not. Yeah, you're not going to get any. If you don't know smaller, who Nawazuddin Uddin Siddiqui is. You just have to assume you know, he's a good actor. Of course. But yeah, if you don't know, like, but I mean, some of the subtle, if you don't know the movies, like they're talking about Gigs of War, and you don't know that Honor Rocket Sheep does a lot of twist, which I don't know if he does that many twist on a rock Sheep. It doesn't seem like he's It's done not that. necessarily twist, Although I haven't but seen his all stories do end, you know. Uh, they just live in unconventional. That's yeah. not a twist, though. Yeah, that's true. That's just good storytelling, I feel like. <laughs> maybe, maybe, but, uh, but yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. There's some nuances, like they'll they'll just randomly joke about his films that you would not really exactly. But uh, I mean, it was hilarious. I enjoyed it. Uh, I would definitely recommend it to anyone who even knows a little bit about Indian cinema. Yeah, for sure. Like the funny scenes we talked about, you didn't know who you didn't have to know who these guys were. Right. Like the police scene and stuff mm, like that. Yeah. You just but yeah, and the police scene's great. It was it was one of my. Uh, yeah, one of I think the better films we've done in India, in my sure. opinion. I pr- maybe top five. We'd have to do and a list. experimental too. It was cool. I love the premise. Very, very, very smart and witty premise. Yeah. But uh, and the, should, they got the perfect guys for it. We should do that soon because we did a top twenty or a top ten for twenty twenty, but we didn't do any Indian cinema films. We should go back and do a top ten of the films that we have reviewed. Our top ten favorite. That would be fun to do. Once we have like 50 reviews under our belt. Yeah, well, maybe we should see like exactly when was the first time we posted our first Indian anything. It would have been uh, March of last year. So maybe we'll do it on the anniversary. (laughs) There you go. There we go. Teasing it right here. Yes, we are. But not guaranteed. Not guaranteed. (laughs) So maybe we should have talked about this off camera. But. All right, All no right. problem. You can check this out on Netflix, I Yes, believe. you can. Nothing beats free, too, on top of that. Absolutely. Good film, and you can watch it for free with your Netflix subscription. All right, everyone. That is it for our review of AK versus AK. If you guys like what you've seen here and you're watching on YouTube, please be sure to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell notification as we drop videos here every single day on this channel. If you guys want to find us, our podcast, audio format, Movie reviews, television recaps, movie news. You can find that on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher. If you guys want some Have You Seen It merch, too, like this sweatshirt I'm wearing here. Look at that. Or this. Wow. Wow. Beautiful handmade. Oh, look at that. Ceramic look at mug. mug. Oh. 
That's incredible. How tasty oh. is that air? Well, it tastes better coming out of that mug. Of course it does. I don't know what they do. Hey, you heard it from Cash Crowds first. So if you guys want some Have You Seen a Merch, you guys can find that link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and listening. My name is Mason Knight. That is Cash Krause, and until next time. Bye. Thank you.